centralized and decentralized filing system. Hello friends, in the last session we have understood the qualities of a good filing system. We have also understood the broad classification of files so as to bring effectiveness in the office filing system. With the filing system, we also referred to the importance of document and record management. Now, let us move ahead to understand some other terms to make filing system effective. Filing system can be made effective by either using centralized or decentralized filing system. Centralized filing system. The documents and papers relating to a department of a business organization may be filed either at the department level itself or in a central place. The office manager has to decide whether the filing should be centralized or decentralized. His decision depends on the various aspects of the business and the kinds of documents to be filed, the number and size of the documents, the frequency of reference, the floor space available for filing, the cost of the equipment, etc. The two systems of filing are centralized filing. Under this system, all the records of the organization relating to the activities of different departments are filed in one place or in the central office. The central place may be called as the filing section or the filing room and may be controlled with the help of centralized index plan. This system implies that individual departments or sections will have nothing to do with the filing of records. The filing equipment and personnel are located in the central place. There are degrees of centralization and centralized filing refer all the files are kept in one place. All the files of general interest are kept by the respective departments. All or most of the files are held by the departments but controlled and staffed from one central point. The principles already stated should guide the office manager in adapting a particular system. Files should be located in such a place as is accessible so that they may be readily available where and when they are wanted. If a central filing department serves these purposes, it should be established, but each case should be considered on its merits. Centralized filing system has certain advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of using the centralized filing system are the filing equipments and floor space are more fully and efficiently utilized. In the circumstances, fewer filing cabinets are required. Unnecessary duplication of records is avoided. For instance, several copies of orders, invoices, etc. when filing is decentralized or departmentalized. Centralizing therefore results in saving of time and cost. The system utilizes trained and qualified personnel which results in greater accuracy in filing the records. Uniformity of filing procedures and systems throughout the organization may be maintained. Better supervision and tighter control of records is facilitated. Greater control is exerted over the retrieval, retention and transfer of records. Since the program operates continuously, it is not hampered by the absence of the employees. Centralized filing offers the advantage of completeness 
of the related documents that is elimination or fragmentation of related information caused by the scattered file location. Economy of time for both file users and file personnel is achieved because there is only one place to send the material to be filed and one place to find it. Charge out and follow up systems can be more efficiently operated since one person or group alone is responsible, minimizes oversight and loss of valuable records. More effective administration of the retention of records schedule is facilitated. Integrity of files can be maintained through access limited to file personnel only. The disadvantages of centralized filing system are records may become more vulnerable since they are stored in one central location. Considerable time is spent on frequently transporting of used record to and from the central storage area. If records cannot be immediately obtained, inconvenience is likely to result. The confidentiality of records may be difficult to maintain. Centralized filing staff may lack the specialized knowledge within the personnel of a particular department possesses and this may result in misfiling. Sending departments may fear their records will lose the identity and become lost in what they consider the shuffle of papers. Now, let us understand the concept of decentralized filing system. Decentralized filing system. Under this system, filing is done by different departments independently and not in centrally in one place. Every department installs a separate equipments and appoints staff to look after the filing work. This system is also known as departmental filing. The advantages of using the decentralized filing system are it saves time, any document needed is readily available within no time, referencing becomes easy, specialized knowledge about the department prevents misfiling. The safety of the papers is also ensured. Filing in the department may be used as a routine time filler for the staff. It therefore reduces the cost incurred on the employment of the staff. The secrecy or the confidential nature of the papers is maintained for they are retained in the department itself. Since filing is on a comparatively smaller scale, greater functional efficiency is ensured. When the departments are located in different geographical areas, departmental filing is the only viable method. Decentralized system has certain disadvantages too. They are, it is a costly filing equipment as it is duplicated for it is required in each department. Specialized filing staff cannot be employed in each department. If specialized staff is employed, it would not be fully utilized and hence cost on staff would go up. Standardization of filing work is not possible in departmental filing. It may be noted that the standardization of filing records and uniformity of work procedures lead to greater efficiency. There may be confusion in filing operations, particularly when papers or documents concern more than one department. In such a case, a duplication of records is necessary for each department. This increases the cost and may also prove to be time consuming. The coordination of records becomes difficult 
because of their decentralized location. Departmental filing lacks proper supervision. Since both the systems have advantages and disadvantages, a clear cut choice of the filing system is very difficult to make. The choice itself depends on the size and the nature of the organization and the relative merits and demerits of a particular system in a given situation. However, certain suggestions may be noted. Decentralized filing is particularly suited to big and autonomous departments dealing with information of a confidential nature or when the departments are located in different geographical areas. Decentralized filing should be adopted for documents which are regularly referred to by a number of departments. When an organization is large, it is better for it to have centralized filing for documents bearing on the assets and investments of the company, its mortgages, charges, lawsuits, etc. Decentralized filing may be restored to far matters concerning different departments. Such a reconciliation of the filing systems is called as a central come decentral system of filing. Now, we are thoroughly clear about the various aspects of filing, its importance, methods and also the importance of records management. The records and files can be easily located in an effective office system only if it follows the concept of indexing thoroughly. So, let us understand the concept of indexing. Need and meaning of indexing. An index is anything that points out or indicates. It is a ready guide to the location of the required file record. It is a process of determining the documents which are to be filed. It is an important aid to filing and finding because when a large number of files are maintained for various purposes, they can be located or indicated by some sort of a guide which is known as the index. It is a reference list for locating a particular document in the file. It enhances the utility of the filing system because documents can be easily got at. Indexing is a process of indications to the desired materials so as to facilitate its location and find it out with ease and without wasting time and energy. Indices are also arranged either in the alphabetical order or numerical order. It may be arranged in geographical orders as well. The index provides information relating to any matter, particularly the locations as to where a matter is lying. It is certainly a good aid to any office dealing in large number of papers. Telephone directory is also an index from which telephone numbers of any person can be found by looking for his name in the directory. In official use, index means a guide to know the whereabouts of the files or records. In big offices, hundreds of files are maintained. To know which file is on what subject, we need condensed information at one place and the index provides that. If the files are kept in alphabetical, alphanumerical or alpha geographical order, there will be no need of index. But if the files are kept in numerical order, an index is a must to know which file relates to what or to whom. The term indexing should not be confused with classification. Classification 
is a method of filing, while indexing is basically a reference to the matter filed. Self-indexing The index may either be kept apart from the records to which it refers or the records themselves may be so arranged as to be self-indexing. If the files are arranged alphabetically, chronologically or geographically in an alphabetical order, there is no need for a separate index for the order of the files is self-indexing. If an alphabetical or chronological arrangement of keeping the records is not followed, a separate index will have to be maintained giving the file title in some order. To give an example, the telephone directory or yellow pages is self-indexing for the matter is arranged in an alphabetical order or subscribers and a reference to the name leads directly to the telephone number. But the index to this book is a separate index. It is apart from the text. Though it assists the readers in locating those papers on which various matters are mentioned. When a separate index is employed, two steps are necessary to reach the record. Firstly, the index should be consulted and secondly, the record should be located. When, however, a record is self-indexing, only one reference is necessary. Features of indexing In order to achieve the objectives of indexing, a good system of indexing should possess some essential features. 1. Safety of index is very important to avoid pilferage of index card or register and to save it from destruction by dust, insects, rats, fire, water, etc. Index equipment should ensure safety of records. It should have a locking arrangement. 2. A good indexing system should ensure speed in operations. It should take the least possible time to locate a card, to take out an obsolete card and to insert a new card. 3. A good system of indexing should be simple to understand and operate. It should not be unnecessarily complex in operations. However, simplicity at the cost of its usefulness is not desired. 4. A good indexing system should be economical in terms of money, space and effort. However, the quality of the equipment may not be foregone in order to save money. Investment on filing equipment is a capital expenditure. Therefore, every care should be taken to ensure that it is economical and useful in the long run. Fifth, Sometimes, it is possible to file a document under two heads. In order to avoid confusion, cross-reference should be given under the head where it should be filed, but it has not been filed. Cross-reference will help in finding such records easily. Sixth, a good indexing system should be flexible. It should have Sufficient scope for expansion as the records of the firm go on increasing day by day. An index should also allow multiplicity of uses. Example, top locate the file to get condensed information about a person and so on. Seventh, the indexing system should go well with the system of filing in the organization. The type of indexing should be determined by the nature of filing operations. 8. A signal may be described as a metal clip, plastic tab or thick paper slip 
which is attached to the exposed edge of a card or file. The object of a signal is to draw attention to certain facts recorded on the card. For instance, a blue signal on the staff cards may indicate that the concerned employee is a member of the staff pension scheme and a red signal may indicate that the concerned employee is a member of the salary linked insurance plan. Advantages of indexing A good system of indexing offers some advantages. Indexing helps the filing clerks to locate easily the documents and letters concerning a particular correspondent. Thus, it facilitates location. A good system of indexing ensures cross-reference and so saves time and efforts. Indexing improves the efficiency of the records administration. In order to achieve these benefits, a good system of indexing should be a. Simple to operate and use b. Economical in operation c. Flexible to allow for expansion when required d. Should go well with the system of filing in the organization. To make indexing effective, the offices may use any of the methods or types of indexing that may suit the office system. Types of indexing The various types of indexes are also known as the methods or systems of indexing. Several types of indexes are used in various offices as aids to the filing system. Some of them are rather crude and rigid, while others are highly sophisticated and expensive. The choice of any system of indexing depends upon the nature and volume of the records to be indexed. Some of the important types of indexes are 1. Page index. An ordinary page index consists of a page for each letter of the alphabet. Fitted with a tab showing the letter and on each page are written the names beginning with that letter and quoting the relevant page numbers. This type of index is mostly in use for minutes and is comparable to the index given at the end of a book. This type of indexing may take other forms. 1. Book bound index. It is in the form of a bound book or register divided into alphabetical section in which the names of the persons or documents are entered. Each section has the leaves cut away at the right hand side so that the initial letters of all sections are visible at a glance. All entries relating to a particular letter of the alphabet are arranged in the same section or page reserved for the same letter of the alphabet in a strict alphabetical order. The book index is very cheap and is good for maintaining a record for a long period. The pages cannot be lost or disarranged because they are bound, but an alteration in the index is difficult. It accommodates comparatively a less number of entries. It is therefore an inflexible method. 2. Loose leaf index. A loose leaf index is one in which Pages are not fixed permanently but are held by a device which makes it possible for one to take out some pages or insert additional pages. The sheets of the pages are fitted onto metal hinges and screwed. When a leaf is inserted or removed, the book is unscrewed and the relevant sheet is inserted or removed from it. 
This method therefore has the advantage of being flexible and adaptable. It offers ample scope for expansion. The main drawback is that the sheets may be manipulated, lost or damaged because of the tearing of punched holes. 3. Vowel index. This is an extension of the bound book index. In big organizations, where the list of correspondence is very large, too much time is wasted in locating the names under reference. Therefore, to facilitate quick reference, the book is maintained on the basis of a vowel classification. Under this method, the section of the index books reserved for each letter of the alphabet are divided into six sections which are reserved for the five vowels A, E, I, O, U and Y. The names of the correspondence of the headings of the files are recorded on the page allotted to the letter of the alphabet and the vowel subsection in that order. For example, the name of Mr. Ramesh will appear on the page allotted to R and subsection A for A is the first vowel in the name of Ramesh. Like book indexing, vowel indexing too is flexible and has a very limited use. 2. Loose or vertical card index. A loose card index is used to overcome the difficulties or drawbacks of an ordinary page index. It consists of a number of cards of small size 12 centimeters into 7 centimeters each concerned with one item of the index. The reference heading is written along the top edge of a card and the remaining space is devoted to indicating the place where the corresponding record may be found. Cards are arranged in an alphabetical or numerical order and are placed in drawers or boxes of suitable dimensions. Each drawer may have a rod running from one end of it to other to hold the cards in position. These drawers are divided into alphabetical section by means of guide cards. To facilitate the location of an individual card, tabbed guide cards may be inserted at intervals. 3. Visible card index. Under this system, the cards are laid flat in transparent covers in a shallow tray or in a metal frame. Each card is fitted into a metal hinge so that it overlaps the one before it in such a way that a narrow strip at the bottom containing the name or title remains visible. The principle underlying the visible card index is that the cards overlap so that one line of entry on each card projects and is visible thus forming a one line index. Some important variations of the visible card index are 1. Automatic card index. Under this system, trays of cards are suspended from a revolving mechanism under push button control by means of which a clerk can obtain quick access to more than 1 lakh cards. 2. Visible books. Overlapping visible card index records can also be kept in a book form. A visible book consists of a loose leaf binder in which pages are arranged like the cards in visible card index. 3. Staggered card index. This system has been developed to give easier reference to the headings. Cards are arranged in groups 
and overlap so that the reference headings on the cutaway corners of a whole group can be seen at once. This system of indexing is sometimes applied to ledger cards to facilitate the extraction of accounting for posting. Fourth, strip index. In every office, whatever the organization, a list of the names, addresses and telephone numbers, etc. of the correspondence has to be maintained. The strip index is especially designed for this purpose. It consists of a frame into which strips of stiff papers can be fitted in any required order. Each strip is devoted to one item. Frames containing these strips may be either fixed on wall or arranged on a rotary stand which can be turned round so that one can look at any part of the index. The strips can be protected from exposure or damage with removable transparent celluloid or plastic window sheets. Strip indexing offers similar advantages and suffers from the same drawbacks as those of visible card indexing. Fifth, wheel index. This is a modern method of visible indexing popularly known for its providing instant reference. The method is a variation of the visible card index. Under this system, cards are arranged about the circumference of a wheel which may be portable or set in a cabinet or desk. A single wheel can hold as many as 5000 cards and as many as 6 wheels can be set up within easy reach of a clerk sitting at his desk. The capacity can be further increased when wheels of a bigger diameter are arranged horizontally. In this system, cards can be withdrawn and inserted without disturbing the other cards and entries can be made on the cards without removing them from the wheel. So friends, we have now got a clear understanding of the entire filing system and the indexing system that make the office system more effective. The offices certainly look towards effectiveness in their functioning by following various methods or types of filing and indexing. Record management is very important as records or documents can be referred to at any time during the functioning of the organization. Record management, filing and indexing are indispensable without each other. The effectiveness in the office system can be achieved if the office caters to all of them together effectively and carefully. With this, we have completed Unit 2. Best wishes for your future endeavors. Thank you.